Hello, everybody, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Today is the day where we celebrate drinking our favorite kind of beer and getting drunk and going to bars and partying for St. Patrick. And today we celebrate wearing green and being Irish and wearing little leprechaun pins that say, kiss me, I'm Irish. And oh, wait, I'm sorry, that was the wrong video. <laughs> None of that has anything to do with St. Patrick. I apologize. Ironically, in this video, we're going to be clearing up a lot of misconceptions about St. Patrick's Day and showing what it's really about. And interestingly, St. Patrick's name wasn't St. Patrick. It was Mayowin Sukit. And he wasn't Irish. He was English. He was born in Roman Britain in 387 AD. And it wasn't until he was about 15 years old that he was kidnapped by pirates and brought into slavery in Ireland. They brought him to Ireland and he had to be a slave there and he had to work hard there every day. But it was in Ireland, and this is what we celebrate in St. Patrick's Day as we're going to see, it's the conversion of Ireland and how St. Patrick converted the entire nation of Ireland to the Catholic faith and to belief in God. That's what we are celebrating. And it all started when he was brought to Ireland. Now, when he was brought there at 15, he worked in the fields and he tended sheep and things like that. And he says in his own writings that God came to him in a vision and kind of appeared to him and had mercy on him and converted his heart back to God. He says he had kind of done some really bad things in his youth and that God had mercy on him and really just called him to preach the faith and to love God with his whole heart. And this conversion experience of Patrick was profound. And Patrick ended up praying day and night. He said he prayed in the mountains, in the rain, in the snow, wherever he was working, whatever he was doing, he would pray and offer it up to God. Yeah, he prayed in the icy mountains and in the snow why? He said his heart was so on fire, aflame with the Holy Spirit and love for God, that he prayed so many places and so many times throughout the day, no matter what he was doing, no matter how difficult the labor, he would offer it to God as a gift of love. And he would pray day and night out of love for God. And so he had a lot of joy. He has a lot of deep writings about his love for God. And I believe he was in Ireland for six years when God gave him another vision and told him to flee leave Ireland. And so he left and he got a ship back and he went back to his home and his family and he became a priest. And from there he went on to become a bishop and he was sent, ironically, back to Ireland to go preach the good news there to the people who were Druids, who were pagans, who didn't know God at all. And he spent the rest of his life, I believe about 40 years, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ, preaching the love of God, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and the truth of the Catholic faith. And it's said that he used a three-leaf clover to represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one flower, three leaves, perhaps not the best analogy, but it's said that he used things to help people to understand who God was. It's said that he converted the leader over there of the Druids who gave him permission to preach, and that made it all downhill because he started preaching the Catholic faith to anyone and everyone one. And a religious order was started in his name, and he ended up converting the whole country to the Catholic faith. People went from nothing, from paganism to Catholicism. They went from godlessness to the true God of the universe. Kind of like Acts 17. People were trying to worship God, but they were doing it the wrong way. Paul said, let me tell you about the God that you think you're worshiping and who he really is. His name's Jesus Christ. Patrick did the exact same thing, and he worked miracles, and he had incredible success in converting the nation of Ireland to God. And that is worth celebrating. That's what St. Patrick's Day is all about. It's about celebrating the incredible, marvelous, extraordinary life of St. Patrick. And it's about him converting a pagan nation to God and to the Catholic faith. That's what St. Patrick's Day is all about. That's what we celebrate. So you'll notice that it has nothing to do with wearing green. And in fact, uh, I'm wearing green today, and I'll tell you about that in a second. But in fact, St. Patrick's color was blue and has historically always been blue until recent times where people have just made it green and made it about being Irish and kiss me, I'm Irish and lucky charms and rainbows and leprechauns. And if you go around and you look at pagans and how they celebrate St. Patrick's Day, although I include many Christians in that too, unfortunately, it's all about nationalism. It's all about being Irish. Everybody's Irish on St. Patrick's Day. And don't get me wrong, I went to Ireland and I preached uh, a weekend retreat there, and I loved the people in Ireland. I love the Irish people. But this 
this is not a nationalistic holiday. You cannot hijack a holy feast day of God for your own nationalistic reasons. It has nothing to do with being nationalistic. Unless, of course, you're talking about converting Ireland to the Catholic faith. That's what we're celebrating, the beauty of the Catholic faith. And St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland because of all he did for Ireland in bringing them to God, not to bars, not to beers, not to throwing up in their beds or any of the other mortal sins and blasphemies and perversions and profanity that happen on St. Patrick's Day, causing him <laughs> to roll over on his grave. So on the one hand, you have the pagans who pervert the day and have no idea what it's about. Many Catholics and Christians use it as an opportunity too, unfortunately, to bar hop and to drink and to get drunk. And that is a mortal sin. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and in other verses that drunkards will not enter the kingdom of heaven. It is an offense against the fifth commandment, which is killing because you are killing yourself, and that is a huge sin against God. And so this, in advance, hopefully will prevent you from doing that on St. Patrick's Day. Or if you already have in the past, you can go to confession to God and confess it to him. But on the other hand, you have people who make it all about being Irish, and it's not. Again, I love the Irish people. I loved preaching over there. I loved preaching the gospel there, and I hope to again someday, but it's not about being Irish. It's not about nationalism. It has nothing to do with nationalism and everything to do with Catholicism. Let's get back to the roots of St. Patrick. If you're going to wear green, fine, but wear it for the right reason. Tell people about the conversion of Ireland, the conversion of the Catholic faith. And in fact, last time I went to Ireland, I was shocked by how much it's gone back to paganism. They reallowed Druids to worship there, and Druidism is allowed there, and pagan statues are being built there, and Ireland is once again going the wrong way. So we need the intercession of St. Patrick to bring Catholicism back. And from what I hear, even in the church there, many of the priests are confused. Many of the priests and nuns are lost. Many of the priests need to be evangelized. And if you want me to come over and evangelize, I will be happy to come to Ireland and give a retreat there, a talk there, preach the gospel there, a weekend apologetics retreat, whatever you need. So let's pray for Ireland. Let's pray again for their conversion. Let's pray again. And I heard this from people in Ireland and people who are Irish. Irish, real Irish, but they said in Ireland, it's not the big um, parade we make it here, you know, here in the United States. It's kind of like St. Valentine's. We pervert St. Valentine and his holy legacy. I mean, you have me men and women, boys and girls sleeping with their boyfriends before marriage to celebrate their love when in fact they're leading each other closer to hell by fornicating before marriage. Again, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says no fornicators will enter the kingdom of heaven. If you're having sex outside of marriage, you cannot go to heaven without repenting of your sins and turning away from them. So in closing, let me just read a couple of things to you. One, the prayer from St. Patrick, which is powerful and I love it, but also from his conversion experience, just to let you know that St. Patrick was a holy man. And that's what we're celebrating. We're celebrating his life. Anytime we find a saint who is holy, worth emulating, we try to imitate their life. And this is from his book that he wrote in his journal. And it says, The Lord opened my mind to the awareness of my unbelief in order that even so late, a whole 16 years old. I might remember my transgressions and turn with all my heart to the Lord my God, who had regard for my insignificance and pitied me in my youth and in my ignorance. He watched over me before I knew him and before I had enough sense to distinguish between good and evil. He still protected me and he consoled me as a father does his son. Wow. So he's saying that God watched over him, protected him, led him back to his own fatherly heart, even though he didn't know him. And even though he was going wayward and going the wrong direction, God looked out and said, I love you. Come to me. And he invited Patrick. And Patrick had this profound conversion experience that he goes on to tell. And you can read about it in his own writings. But he lived for God his whole life. And he has this famous prayer of St. Patrick, which you can pray as well. And it says, Christ, be within me. Christ, be behind me. Christ, be before me. Christ, beside me. Christ, win me. Christ, to comfort me and restore me. Christ, be beneath me. Christ, be above me. Christ, inquired. Christ, be here in my danger. Christ, in my heart and all that loves me. Christ, in the mouth of my friends and strangers, unquote, and so on and so on. 
It's a whole long, beautiful prayer about how everything we do in every circumstance of life, the highs and the lows, the goods and the bads, the boring and the mundane and the super exciting, Christ in everything. Christ in every part of our life. Christ isn't just something we do on Sundays or we just pray for two minutes in the morning and at night and then we're done. We live our, no, it's in everything we do. All of our work, all of our study, everything we do should be a gift for Christ. Considering Christ, loving Christ, offering it up to him and love. So let's really celebrate St. Patrick's Day today. Let's pray a little bit more than usual. Let's think about his life and how we can grow in holiness, what sins we might need to get rid of to reflect a life that's more like St. Patrick, and how Christ's love has saved us and how we can live for him all the more. So don't offend God by the way you celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Please love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and let's celebrate the life, the marvelous life, a life that is worth emulation, the life of St. Patrick. Please share this message with the world. Please actually share it. And please like it and comment on it so more people see this video and get the message out there. And thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching. We thank all of our listeners and all of our YouTubers and people who listen to our podcast. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of our YouTube family. And thank you to all of our recent patrons, Romero, Emra, Elise, Tony, Adam, Maria, and all the others who have donated to our cause so we can spread this gospel, so that we can save the world for Christ. Thank you. And if you haven't been a patron yet, and you haven't become a patron, and you would like to join this battle, and if you are inspired by these videos, and they're helping you, then please help us. Help us to help others by supporting this ministry. $50 a month, $10 a month, $25 a month. These are what all of our newest patrons have donated. We thank you so much for that. Lastly, check out our Facebook page below. Follow us, our Instagram, our podcast, and other episodes. We have things on our podcast that we don't have on our YouTube video. So if you're looking for even more, go check out our podcast, The Catholic Truth Podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Pray for us, and we are always praying for you. God bless you. (laughs) 